my friends, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. In our last video, Shepard and Garrus reignited their romance, and it was all awkward and mushy and sweet and gushy, and I loved it. And I'm sure other things happened, but that was honestly the most important thing that happened to me. <laughs> now, in today's video, I do want to head back to the galaxy map, but before we do that, and I forget yet again, let's get some of these codex entries done. So planets and locations, technology, weapons, let's... Hmm. There's so many that I need to do, like Reaper War, the Reapers, but let's just try to get the main codex done first. So let's do planets and locations. The John Grissom Academy, founded in 2176, is the Alliance's premier school for young human biotics. Oh, yeah. The institution is housed in a space station in orbit over the human colony of Elysium. Its main program, the Ascension Project, is designed both to train and monitor young biotics, as well as help them integrate into society after graduation. Unlike the project's previous incarnation, Biotic Acclimation and Temperance Training, or BAT, the training is not exclusively military in nature. The Academy also employs scientific personnel, including Dr. Kaylee Sanders, to develop synthetic intelligence systems and biotic amplifiers like the new L4 implants. I feel like that's a quest we got in the last video, maybe? I need to go and do that one, too. But I want to do... I, I, want, to, I want to do a couple other quests first. All right, technology. Biotics, Biotics is the ability element of... Zero. Subjected to an element zero can... Once believed to be a... Metagel right, is a common there. medicinal... Omnitool. Omnitool. The genophage, genophage. bioweapon was created to end the Krogan rebellions. The Turians fought the Krogan to a standstill. But the sheer weight of Krogan numbers indicated they could not be stopped through conventional means. The Turians collaborated with the Salarians to engineer a genetic counter to the Krogan's rapid breeding. The genophage virus replicated by eating key genetic sequences, altering every cell of Krogan physiology, so the Krogan could not use gene therapy to fix the affected tissues. Once a genophage strain could replicate no more, it would starve and die limiting mutation and contamination. In addition, the created genetic flaw is hereditary. The resulting mutation made only one in a thousand Krogan pregnancies carry to term, reducing offspring viability rather than fertility. Krogan warlords fought battles over the females able to carry children to term. The release of the genophage is still controversial and bitterly debated in many circles. Yeah. Yes, it sure is. I was hoping there would be some sort of update, but it, there's not. Okay, so let's try weapons, armor, and equipment. Although melee combat applications for the Omni tool are almost as old as the device itself, the feature was largely unused prior to the Reaper invasion. The need to take on multiple husks in close quarters forced the Alliance to develop ways to enhance the tool's offensive capability. <laughs> the most common melee design is the Omni Blade. A disposable silicon carbide weapon flash forged by the tool's mini fabricator. The transparent, nearly diamond hard blade is created and suspended in a Mass Effect field safely away from the user's skin. Warning lights illuminate the field so the searing hot blade only burns what it is intended to the opponent. Oh. <laughs> More technically adept soldiers frequently modify their Omni tools to maximize stopping power through electrical, kinetic, or thermal energy. Some troops integrate the weapon with their kinetic barriers, transforming the Omni tool into a wrist-mounted bludgeon. Others fabricate flammable gases held in place by a mass effect field and ignited upon impact. All prove deadly surprises for opponents who expect a disarmed Alliance warrior. Yeah, I gotta remember to try to use it. I think I have to hold my melee attack button, but we'll, we'll worry about it later. Okay, so let me see. I want to maybe try something under the Reaper War. The fall of Earth. The Reaper took, the Reapers rather, took Earth in a matter of hours. The Alliance knew the first wave would arrive from Batarian space, but they were unprepared for the speed and scale of the attack. The Reapers bypassed the 6th and 7th fleets of Terra Nova and Eden Prime, flying straight from relay to relay where they could neither be tracked nor intercepted. The tactic was unexpected. I mean, wouldn't that be the most efficient thing to do? But it's fine. Uh, since the navies of organic species would never risk committing out of FTL, 
within combat reins or, or leaving enemies at their backs to threaten supply lines. Oh yeah, Reapers don't have to worry about that, do they? At Arctura Station, more than a dozen Reaper capital ships engaged the Alliance's second, third, and fifth fleets. This was mere screening for the main force. Dozens more capital ships continued through the Charon Relay, where the first fleet had been lying in wait, but was soon destroyed. The fourth fleet near Earth had a few minutes of advance warning it stood no better chance. After destroying Earth's comm buoys, smaller Reaper destroyers wiped out all GPS and communication satellites in Earth's orbit and cut the undersea fiber optic cables that linked the continents. Earth's resistance now relies on outdated radio towers and a few quantum entanglement communicators whose matched pairs happen to be on other continents or outside the solar system. Well, that's lucky. Communication is so limited that the fate of entire nations remain unknown. Capital ships bombarded defense installations in industrial centers, annihilating entire cities with populations in the low millions, including Adelaide, Hamburg, Aljubail, Fort Worth. Meanwhile, Reaper destroyers descended into the atmosphere to melt roads and capture population centers with minimal loss of life. This is not an example of the Reapers being merciful. More likely, they are hurting their prey to make the coming harvest that much easier. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll read some more out of that section tomorrow, maybe. But galaxy map. So the plan today, if the game lets me, if it's unlocked, is that I would like to go and work on Shrike Abyssal. After that, I, I do want to, I will do Eden Prime like you guys have been recommending. It's a priority mission, but not like a, it's one I can do without moving the game forward. And you also said to go back to the Citadel, but I don't want to yet. <laughs> I want to do quests first, okay? I'll get there eventually, I promise. Before the next main quest, we'll get back to the Citadel because there's all kinds of people there. And I have a feeling if I go to the Citadel, I'm just going to get sucked in and be there for three more days. And we were just there. Anyway, though, Shrike Abyssal, Prothean Disc. A Volus diplomat needs a Prothean Obelisk. Recover from the Shrike Abyssal no specifics on which system or planet so that's helpful and deliver it to him at the citadel embassy but let's see if i can even get there it probably would have been smart for me to check that before i started today's video but uh that didn't happen <laughs> um i do need more fuel okay that's done although i should probably not need to do that as much because if I go go a scanning, I get fuel that way, or is that fuel that goes towards my resources? So, Exodus, a lot more are open. Kite's Nest, Hades Gamma. There's still all, this whole sections here that are not active. Sigurd's Cradle. Oh, good, the Shrike Abyssal. Reapers have invaded. Shocking. <laughs> So how many systems are we looking at? Oh, just two. I'm surprised there's just two. Is there any more down here? Probably not. I'm wasting my fuel as usual. Oh gosh, oh gosh, get back. We gotta get back. Ooh, in our system. Let's refuel. I think what I'll do, oh no, I can't refuel. <laughs> there is no refueling station here, awesome. Well, ideally what I would like to do is to scan this section last because if the Reapers come, then I can hop onto the mass relay and get out of here, but uh, we'll, we'll see what's possible. But let's look at all the planets first, then I'll head to Erla Rost, I guess, and then do the planets there and scan there. And, and I'm over I'm over explaining everything as usual. Let's just get to it. Zeta Bon is a large, dense planet named for a Volus god of punishment. Its crust is rich in uranium, eroded by winds to create large radioactive dust storms across its surface. The Volus of Talisphia have explored the planet thoroughly with space probes and telepresent robo mining machines and discovered they are not the first to exploit the planet. Plastics from a mining station <laughs> approximately 50,000 years old. Hmm, can be found near the planet's equator. Curiously, the mines nearby were not tapped out of uranium ore. They were instead abandoned at the height of their operation. Wow, am amazing how that happened. I wonder who could have caused them to abandon their mines. 
A unique discovery, Aphris is a heavenly twin, a planet in a star system that has not one, but two worlds of sufficient mass to retain a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere within the habitable life zone of its parent star. Fossil evidence shows abundant vertebrates and evidence of a sapient terrestrial avian species in its Bronze Age. However, the only trace of contemporary life on the planet is that of a single-celled organism in its seas. All else has suffered from an extinction event, a series of massive impacts that vaporized vast quantities of water and lofted dust into the atmosphere. Early theories that this event was a collision with a fragmenting asteroid have now been discounted. The impact craters were aimed directly at, ha uh, at habitation centers. You know, one thing I do have to say is I love how the planets are telling about like the last system we were in for the Turians was telling about how all the Turians were suffering and what had happened since the rebirth had come. Right now it's talking about historical events or historical species that suddenly vanished, suddenly died 50,000 years ago, also most likely from the rebirth. I, I, I appreciate all of that. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on to the next one. The sister tragedy to the extinction event on Aphris, Tosal Nim, was the rarest of jewels, a second garden planet within the same life zone as Aphris. It must have been so cool. Anyway, not as old as its sister planet, its fossil evidence indicates it was home to abundant invertebrate sea life. However, similar craters to those on Aphris created a dust shroud that killed 99% of biota on the planet. The even spacing of the craters indicates a coordinated, simultaneous attack from points around the globe, rather than an asteroid collision or, or supervolcanic scenario. Yeah, more, more Reaper bad things. And then... I really wish they'd left the planet names not labeled, and that there was a percent complete of exploration, just so I could track, track myself a little bit better. Because <laughs> I'm going to miss something, it's guaranteed. A Jovian gas giant, Vem Oska, weeping witness in Empyrean Volus, is a low-density hydrogen helium planet with 35 moons. Later this year, 33 of the moons will be visible from the planet's surface in a conjunction, an event that will be recorded by space probes from all over the galaxy. Will it? I don't know that it will be anymore. I should just look here. Obviously, there's only one other system. Okay. Erla Rost. Well, let's hope we find some fuel over here because I'm running out. I wonder what happens if I run out of fuel. It's not like I have resources like the last game. Named the Shining Sea in an old Volus language, Bovis Tor is so named for its boiling surface rich in glowing hot alumina flecked with dark ridges of carbon. Its thick atmosphere of nitrogen and oxygen is no indicator of life since the temperatures are simply too high. Okay, that was... That was nothing Reaper related. That's... Oh, it looked way cooler from the distance. <laughs> Talosphia is a planet capable of supporting life if that life happens to breathe ammonia. <laughs> Discovered by Asari explorers, the planet was used as a bargaining chip by the Citadel Council, who quickly drafted a colonization agreement with its wealthy client race, the Volus. The Council would fund the Volus colonization efforts in return for massive trade benefits. With uncharacteristic enthusiasm, an enormous Volus influx ensued, and the Council reaped the economic benefits for a dozen years before the colonization bubble burst. The Reapers found Talus via easy prey. The independent planet had a defense fleet only sufficient to handle small-scale actions, its high population and industrial base once a deterrent to war with other Terminus systems worlds has only served to attract a larger number of rapers than usual. Oh, 3.8 billion estimates are pre-invasion. Oh gosh, that's so awful. An ice giant, Doze Atab Skywarden, has a bluish tinge from its hydrogen methane atmosphere. Its axial tilt causes its seasons to vary wildly in temperature. Okay, well, I haven't found. I must have to scan to be able to find this Prothean. Wait, like obelisk? Disc? Obelisk. Why, why is this so difficult to remember? 
All right, well, back to the map we shall go to do some scanning. So let's see what we can get away with. Ah, uh, they're coming already? I found something. You found something. Ah, they're coming. Wreckage of fuel depot destroyed by enemy forces. Fuel can be salvaged from the debris. Okay, let's escape. Oh, Reapers. Oh, Reapers. Oh, Reapers, Reapers. Evasion successful. Whoo. Oh, 25% of the assets recovered. Untouchable. Escape a Reaper in the gal. I already got this one game. I, okay. <laughs> so we got a bunch more to still find. Signal confirmed. Okay, let's get, investigate this one. More fuel, thank you. And then what's over here? Start the scanner here. Very slowly, planet will turn. <laughs> it's really slow. And it's not like any, oh, but it is a little bit faster if I take off the scanner. Lost and found. Did I find credits recovered? But I didn't find the... I didn't find the... the disc. Hmm. Should we risk going back to the other one and see if we can find it? Because it must be there. Okay, I'm 100% assets recovered from Zay Cha. Let's try going back to Earl of Rost. We'll risk it. I don't have much fuel left, but we'll risk it. Oh, there it is. That's where I need to go. Oh, run faster. Reapers eluded. Barely. Let's try to come up here. I have so no no fuel left. Okay. All right, a little closer. In our orbit. <laughs> Let's see if we can scan it. Start scanner. Okay, we need to go this way. This way. Turn faster. This could be such a poor life decision. Lost and found. Did we find it? Prothean obelisk. Okay, we found it. Now let's escape the Reapers. Must go fast, must go fast, must go fast. Faster, 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 oh gosh. Faster than light jump successful. Whoo, that was close. We're gonna run out of fuel. What happens? Approach the fuel depot to purchase fuel. I know I would like to, but there isn't a fuel depot here. Like, it doesn't exist. But hey, we did it. <laughs> Let's go to my journal. Not that it would have updated anything, but I, I need to go back to the Citadel, which we will do. But now we're going to go do Eden Prime. So Cerberus has discovered a Prothean artifact on Eden Prime. Land on the planet to recover the artifact. And I do not remember what area Eden Prime is in, but I feel like the map tells me. I feel like it gives me that much information, right? Citadel. Uh, hmm, maybe it doesn't tell me. Dr. Arya Talog. Uh, Cerberus Lab. Why am I unable to rescue the students? No, that was the Grissom Academy. Herm. I think I'm going to try Exodus because I think that's where Eden Prime is, but I'm probably wrong. But we can try. Hopefully it is a fuel depot. <laughs> because that's what I really need is, is fuel depot. Yay, Eden Prime. All right. Perfect. Fuel depot. Really? There's no fuel depot here either. That is unfortunate. Okay, well, let's go do the mission first. 
Why not? It's not like I have fuel to do anything else. <laughs> so this idyllic agrarian world was one of the first human colonies established beyond the Charon Mass Relay, because Eden Prime, that was the first place I ever went to in Mass Effect, right? Eden Prime's fertile biosphere drew heavy immigration from the Systems Alliance and other human organizations. In 2183, Eden Prime was attacked by a Geth force led by the rogue Spectre Saren Arturius. Commander Shepard responded to the attack and countered a Prothean beacon that warned of an imminent Reaper invasion. It is thanks to this beacon and the commander's quick action that the galaxy has any chance of survival today. Although the Reapers rushed past much of the Exodus cluster in their plan to take Earth, it is clear the war has come to Eden Prime. Distress signals have jammed all available frequencies. Fires burn in vast swaths across the arable land, and its once extensive monorail system is twisted metal. Cerberus has much to lose if, the, if word of their ruthless attack on the human colony gets out. What they stand to gain must be equally valuable. So population was 4.2 million pre-invasion, but it, but is the invasion and all the destruction solely caused by Cerberus or is it a combination of the two? And why is Cerberus here? Are they here to make humans into their like human geth combos like we saw on Mars? Cause that was awful. Liara is coming, I guess. But what if I wanted to, I guess Liara is coming. <laughs> so let's bring Garrus because I want to. <laughs> I need to bring Edie next time though. Okay, I need to fix my powers too. And I don't think I have anything to change here. Liara, I think she's good. And then Garrus. I think I'm going to modify his stuff. A bit. Oh, there's four options. Increases spare shot capacity. Increases damage by 5%, speeds perception by 25%, enhancing aim for a brief time. Biometric sensors and auto-targeting software adjust to the user's pulse and breath rate. Fancy schmancy. Increases damage by 15%. Increases accuracy by 15%. It helps aim through smoke. Stability enhancing scope increases accuracy while moving and taking damage. Let's go with that one for Harris. And he doesn't use that one anyway, so let's hit back and confirm. Okay, so now you guys kindly told me um, that I should probably, you were explaining the weight situation to me. So I think that I'm actually going to increase my weight capacity so that my abilities reload faster or have a smaller cooldown. I feel like that's what I'm gonna go with. And then concussive shot also said I should be using this one. So I will do so. I did use it a little bit, but now that it's gonna be more useful, we should definitely use it more often. Okay, so let's see. We'll upgrade his concussive shot. And then Liara, let's see. Let's upgrade her singularity. So increase singularity's hold duration by 30%. Additional enemies can be lifted before singularity fades. Increases impact radius. Let's have it go longer, I think. I think that'll be good. All right, I think we're good. Th this is as good as it's gonna get. Eden Prime. This is where it all began. Mm-hmm. Where the Prothean Beacon gave you the vision that warned us about the Reapers. And where Saren launched his first major attack with the Geth. Yes. And now, with Cerberus here, Eden Prime's colonists are under attack again. Well, I remember Eden Prime. Seems like more than just three years ago. I remember the reports. I was busting my ass trying to find evidence against Saren. 
Hearing that he'd attacked a colony while I sat mired in bureaucracy, that was a bad day. <laughs> you and bureaucracy, it got better? Uh, let's go with the it got better option. We got him in the end. That we did. Cerberus hit Eden Prime hard. Whatever they found here was worth a major offensive. There are survivors elsewhere on the colony, but they killed everyone near the dig site. These people do have it rough. We're not, I mean, I we do need to get this artifact, but like we also maybe can help people. Maybe let me live in the land of delusion. They deserve better. I know. The Alliance did what it could to evacuate colonists, but Cerberus came in so quickly. If we find survivors, we'll do what we can. What about this artifact? Is it part of the Prothean device we found on Mars? The Alliance didn't get any specifics about what Cerberus has uncovered. But whatever it is, it's better off with us than with Cerberus. Yeah. I'm bringing you in as close to the dig site as I can. No way we'll avoid detection, but you should have a few minutes. Understood. All right, everyone, get ready to move. With luck, we can get to the dig site before Cerberus knows we're here. <laughs> Are we just jumping? No sign of survivors. Mm. Come on, we need to find the dig site. This was a beautiful colony once. It survived, Saren. It can survive this. They rebuilt Mendoir. It wasn't the same. It never is. Oh, that was her home world. Okay, let's get everybody's stuff on. Incendiary ammo. Air piercing ammo, warp ammo. Okay, we've got them right guns. But there were codex hunters I actually wanted to look at because they're in relation to this quest. So planets and locations. And then it was, oh, is it not here? I thought it said planets and location in Prime. Freedom's Progress, maybe? Freedom's Progress colony is once a typical Alliance settlement, but following a complete communications blackout and its apparent destruction is now a lightning rod for anxiety. No, I don't think that one's it. Okay, uh, technology though. And then it was artifacts. The Citadel Council has called for immediate donation of protein artifacts to bolster the war effort, primarily items of Reaper origin and recording of their attacks. The Exogenic Corporation set an example by donating a store of newly discovered paleo technology and releasing the data archives of deep space research colonies destroyed by the Reapers. Several private collectors have since stepped forward to donate the entirety of their collections. But despite an offer of amnesty for anyone concealing such artifacts, not everyone has responded to the council as the council had hoped. Several artifacts have been found in obscure underground markets on safe haven worlds presumably sold by newly arrived refugees who needed funds to survive. Reports say that smugglers continue to sell stolen artifacts and armed raids on archeological sites have rendered even legal operations extremely hazardous. After several reports of mercenary groups turning on the archeologists who hired them, Elanus Risk Control Services began to offer security details for archeological sites at a considerably reduced rate. But, like, what safe haven worlds are even in existence right now? Because, like, I, I, like, it, it, it <laughs> to me, I'm like, they, there shouldn't be any. The Reapers are going to go everywhere. Is it just worlds where they haven't gotten to yet? And that's really what it is? I, sorry, I'm, I'm, as usual, speaking poorly. This is kind of eerie. Dig site. That's where I need to go. Look at that. Bits of Prothean tech sticking out of the ground like an old bone. So, Liara, ever dug up, uh, what do humans call it? A dinosaur? <laughs> no. Dinosaurs and other fossils would be paleontology. I'm an archaeologist. I study artifacts left by sapien species. 
The two fields are completely different, and... Oh, you were joking. A bit, but at least you're catching on these days. <laughs> no, no joke flirting with, with my Garrus, okay? <laughs> Let's just be clear on that. <laughs> like, oh, you were joking. <laughs> oh, let's salvage. I was like, nothing? Okay, we salvaged money. We need to go shopping at some point. We're gonna need lots of money, I'm sure. Processing update. We've taken more able-bodied men and women from pacified neighborhoods. The colonists generally have accepted the story that they have gone to perform tedious but safe manual labor in a Cerberus research camp on the other side of the planet. And when, when we increased food rations as payment for the work, most of the complaints died out. Maintain the story as long as possible. We don't have the manpower to fight the entire colony. And if these families knew they were never going to see their sons and daughters again, there's no way they'd cooperate. Shepard, this Cerberus data could help the colonists still alive on other parts of Eden Prime. How? I can get this intel to Eden Prime's resistance. Maybe it will help them fight back against Cerberus. Okay, how do we do that? Eden Prime Resistance Movement. The colonists of Eden Prime are fighting the Cerberus occupation. Help the Resistance Movement by getting them Cerberus intel. Okay, but how do I do that? Okay. Like, here's the information, Liara. Do I, I'd probably give it to her back on the... Back on the Normandy, but... <laughs> I... Okay. The journal is pretty update light. That's where we were. There. That's the elevator that leads down into the dig site. Okay. Can we look over here first? Oh, wait, we can't. Yeah, I have a feeling your sons and daughters are being made into, like, human geth hybrids to be controlled by the elusive man. Just putting it out there. Not so close to the edge, Shepard. Goddess, that doesn't seem possible. It's not a Prothean artifact, it's... A Reaper one? A Prothean. Like the Collectors, or those bodies we found back on Ilos. Like the bodies we found back on Ilos, but this one is alive. I'm sorry, what? Right. That doesn't sound possible. You saw Prothean stasis chambers in the archives on Ilos. The only reason those failed was a lack of power. Cerberus found this in an underground bunker. It still has power. He's been in stasis for the past 50,000 years, waiting for us. Think of what we could learn. Oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm curious about them? Yes, but like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> There's a Prothean here? Like an actual, okay. What can you tell me about the Protheans? The people, not the technology. Given your experience with the Prothean Cypher, you probably know as much about them as I do. The Prothean Empire spanned the known galaxy. They uplifted countless other species to help them join the galactic community. Hmm. Galactic community? You think they had something like a council? Yes, exactly. Their cultural and artistic expression are actually quite close to those of the ancient Asari. And given their similar interests in helping other species, it's clear that they believed in interspecies cooperation. That sounds too friendly. Is there such a thing as too friendly? Is there? I mean, probably. Impressive? I'm gonna go with impressive. The way you describe them, they sound a lot like the Asari. I'm certain I'm coloring their culture with my own perceptions. Whatever the Protheans were, finding one alive represents an incredible opportunity. Yeah, I'm... That explains why I had to bring you. <laughs> and had no choice but to do so. Good thing we brought our Prothean expert. I hope I can help. If this single Prothean was sent into stasis, he could be the foremost scientist of his time, or perhaps the wisest counselor. Ah, <sighs> Cerberus damaged the life pod when they excavated it. The life signs are unstable. Then let's get him out of there. No, breaking open the pod would kill him. We have to find the command signal that ends the stasis mode. We also need to figure out how to physically open the pod without doing more damage. Okay. 
Okay. Cerberus took over the labs nearby to research what they found at the dig site. That's likely our best bet. Holy crap! There they are. Oh, I have an update for my journal? Lies. Cerberus has discovered a living Prothean preserved in a stasis pod on Eden Prime. Get the Prothean out of the pod and away from Cerberus. What? It actually, I didn't install the mod, I swear. <laughs> it actually updated all by itself. Okay, let's get out my sniper rifle. And then on my incendiary ammo. Whoop, Liara. You are kidding me. like when my companions use their abilities I cannot use my ability Let's get moving before more of them come back. Those guys hit hard. I don't, I don't like that. My shields are so squishy too. Then again, they were snipers, so they should hit hard. That's how that works, right? What on earth? Like how Liara was just frozen in spot dead. <laughs> that was funny. I found it funny. Oh no. Oh no. Find the pod. Where? Okay. Um, hmm. Let's go in here first. It's really close to the edge. Deployment update. Local resistance is heavy in the south and west sections of the colony. We've pulled most of our troops from the north neighborhoods to assist. All remaining troops in the north neighborhood continue standard patrol activities to maintain the illusion of a large presence in the area. If the locals knew we were understaffed, they could do some serious damage. More intel to help the colonists. The uh, more we find, the better chance they'll have. Okay, so we just need to find more stuff and then the quest does whatever it does. 3,000 credits. Thank you. So, in other words, just be careful you don't miss anything, Jessica. Okay, so it looks like we go down there, maybe? So let's go over here, like I had started to do. Oh, maybe?
Fire protected by shields. Okay. There's that one there. Now I can use my concussive shot, right? I aim it at the right person, maybe. <laughs> oh, he's already dead. Oh, that's convenient. <laughs> there we go. Look at me using my my stuff. Because of shot. Garrus, I feel like you're making a poor life choice. I'm so proud of myself. I use my powers. Like multiple times use my powers. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it only took three games for me to start doing it, right? <laughs> there. That lab found footage of the Protheans. Cerberus is studying it to find the stasis deactivation signal. Oh, 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 but I need to... Mm. Let me do a hard save. And if it kicks me out too early, then I'll reload and we'll do the other half of the compound first. But I'm hoping it doesn't do that. Garrus, you're trying to be impressive and jumping over things we can just walk around? Fine. data. Return to dark space. Then we will rise a million strong. For the Empire. For the Empire. Get to your stasis pod. Victory. Broadcast the stasis readiness signal to all life pods. And the refugees who have yet to reach the bunker. Their sacrifice will be honored in the coming Empire. Too late. I've got the signal. You understood that? You didn't? No. All I saw was static. Cerberus was trying to make sense of it without success. The Prothean cipher you received on Pharos, it lets you see the images as a Prothean would and understand their language. Whatever it does, I saw the video and the signal they used. Perfect. Then we just need to figure out how to physically open the pod. Okay, find the remaining pod data. That was really cool. Oh, I like their accents and the sounds of their voices and everything. I'm gonna get a Prothean friend, aren't I? <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, we gotta check every nook and cranny for the uh, people on their resistance movement. You're very impressive, Garrus. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we've done here. Oh, we came in there, so let's go over this way. Oh, gosh. They were gunned down while having drinks and watching the game. This isn't a military stronghold. It's somebody's home. We didn't kill these people, and we're going to shut down the bastards who did. Maybe instead of returning to the Alliance, Shepard should have, like, 
turned around and shot down everything Cerberus. I mean, yeah, bigger picture, but like, mm, they're just bad people. They're destroying the humanity that the Reapers are getting to. It's not. Um, I see bad guys. Hang on. No, 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 no. I... I didn't mean to do that, but apparently that's happening. Are we having, like, same music from, like, Eden Prime? <laughs> like, when we first started the game? All those months ago? Uh, Liara. Right away. Liara. Understood. Right away. Okay. No, don't stop getting turrets up. Entirely not what I intended to do. We're going to go back up in here. On it. And now we're going to pause for today. So in tomorrow's video, we are going to continue looking for all of the things that we need to unlock what I'm assuming is going to be our Perthian companion. And then go from there like normal. <laughs> but as always, thank you so very much for watching. Please do keep yourselves safe. And I will see you again tomorrow with another new Mass Effect 3 video.